almost reaching 30 million views on this video. I have had the last month spammed by you guys requesting for the tutorial of this video. And I'm so sorry if it took me so long. But my card broke. So I wish that I can tell you that I have everything saved on iCloud and that is not a problem, but that is absolutely not the case. So today I'm gonna recreate the tutorial of this, explaining you everything with what I filmed from my phone. And don't worry, I am gonna give you all the instructions. So let's get rolling. Like always, let's start by explaining you how much I spent on this entire build. And this is probably the most expensive DIY that I made. And that is a little bit less than $300. But if you think that it's literally two couches vertically and that the original one cost $20,000, I say that we saved some money. Yes, I saved you some money. Oh. Main pieces of equipment for this tutorial are going to be four pieces of plywood. I got the thickest that they had in store because I do not want to fall from the last floor of it and a bunch of sticks. And that's all you need for the skeleton of your ADHD couch. I know that is not called the ADHD couch, but that is the viral name that is going all around the place right now. But if you want to buy the original one for $27,000, you're more than welcome to do it from Vita. I can happily tell you that the height of this couch is 2 meter 0.6. So yes, all you need to do is take out your ruler and start marking down the measurements that you need on the plywood itself. Because two sheets are gonna be enough to create one side and two sheets are gonna be for the second part. We are gonna be building the two couches completely separately. So first, let's go through the dimensions of the first one. Starting from the couch on the right. Yes, I do offer now to my patrons full sketches and measurements and notes about every single build I did. So if you wanna make them, you can totally go and subscribe over there. What I did for the first couch, the one on the right, was making a base of one meter 15. And instead the second curve, that is the one where we have the first sitting, is gonna be only 79 centimeters. And the top part that is the thickest of all, it's following the same exact size at the bottom, so we're gonna have again 115. Once you have everything nice and measured, you are gonna literally take out your jigsaw and simply cut out all the ziggy zaggy that you need for this shape, and then we're gonna double it. So you don't need to calculate it again, I would just place the wood on top of the second plywood and cut it all out, and finally you have the first structure. To make the build of the inside, let's build a skeleton of this thing. You are literally gonna position the two pieces of plywood, the identical ones, one on top of each other so that they match and go inside with your driller from the top, creating one little hole in both of them at the same time so that they are at the same height without calculating it. A little hole every 10, 15 centimeters. This should be enough for you to then go and connect the little pieces of wood inside in between the two structures. It's gonna be a little bit of a tedious work, but it's actually easy and simple and it's super stable. You saw me jumping on this thing multiple times now. Ah, you don't believe me, right? So don't worry, this is a little video of me climbing on it before putting all the cover and the foam inside of it. So this is me climbing up and down and yeah, this is also a video of showing you all the inside and take care that I'm not putting any wood on the back and on this hole over here. Let me explain you why. As you can see, we did all the top and front part, but we still did not put nothing on the back. We did not do this on purpose because now when we're gonna put the fabric, we are gonna need a space to come inside from this side to grab the fabric and otherwise you would not be able to do that. Point number two. If you can see here on the top, I did not close it. But this is not a mistake and it's not something that we're gonna do later. This is actually an entrance to go to the top because there's one sitting area also up there. Let me show you all the sitting spaces that we have. Now that we have all the base completely built, all you need to do is cover the inside part with foam. You can decide to add even more foam than I did. If, for example, you're doing this for your kids and you want it very soft, I would, in that case, add foam also on the external part so that it, it's more soft also here. But I will show you now in this video what I did for this couch. I just added the foam on all the internal skeleton situation of the sticks all the way from the bottom to the top to make it as soft as possible. You can also decide to use a thicker foam. But if you want to stay on the budget and stay under $300, you can choose the two centimeter foam and I can guarantee you, 
I took naps on this. It was comfortable. Putting the foam on could not be easier because all you have to do is take out your staple gun and staple on the two external parts of the foam. I wouldn't do it in the middle because you would see the shape going inside, but on the two external parts before you reach the outside. So basically here. You're gonna staple this all the way up and that's it. We are now getting to the most expensive part of this tutorial and that is the fabric because I needed like 18 meters of fabric to cover this entire thing. Yes, if you go through every single curve, it's a crazy amount of fabric. What I actually did was starting from the outside. Took out again my staple gun, so yes, there is no sewing in this tutorial, and just stapled every single part that I could to the wood, this time on top of the foam, and did it all the way up. Once I finally had the internal part of the couch covered, it was time to staple also the external part where I told you I did not put any sort of foam and I totally needed to drag this upside down and put it on the floor because I could not reach the higher parts. But it was a pretty simple job because as I told you, I did not do the back yet. So because it had an opening part from the back, not only I could staple from here, but I could go inside with my hands from the back pull the fabric as tight as I needed it and finish to staple all the inside without leaving too many marks. It almost looks like we actually sewed it without all the headache of sewing. The luckiest part that let me save at least a little bit of money was the external part of the couch. And this is because normally fabric comes of one meter 40 times the height that you want to buy. And there's no part of this couch that is over 115. So I could totally just put the fabric on the entire length, let it drop all the way to the floor and cut it out of the shape that I needed to make my couch. You see me doing this in the video and it was extremely simple and then I just pulled it to the inside again and that was it. Now, I did exactly the same thing at this point also for the back. Yes, we finally need to go and add also wood lines on the back so that we can finally go and close our couch. So the back part, because it's straight, I literally stapled the top part, the bottom part, pulled it as tight as possible, and then put just a few staples on the side so that you would not see all the staples on it. Another episode is over, but before I show you better the result of this sofa, it is time to give a shout out to my amazing, amazing, amazing pattern subscribers. Usually I do put and film myself putting the name of every single subscriber inside everything that I build, which I did, but as you know, I cannot show it to you, so we're gonna do a vocal shout out for this time. So thank you Shalom, thank you Aja, thank you Zari, thank you to Keith McTarkin, thank you to Leila, thank you to Leslie, thank you to Anais L, thank you to Shahar Shams, thank you Yananin Anandan, and thank you to the new subscribe and that's all welcome Danny Richardson. Now let's go see the results.